One Sunday morning, Red Tiger escaped from the jail. Alma began hearing reports of murders and thefts. The people said, Red Tiger is guilty of these crimes. Alma refused to believe it. Others are imitating him, she said. She was sure Red Tiger's life had been changed. Alma wrote messages to him asking him to surrender. Her friends risked their lives to get the messages to him. One day, Alma was called to appear before two British officials. They questioned her about Red Tiger's escape. Many unkind things were said about her. Alma kept a light burning in the window each night at Donover, hoping Red Tiger would come to surrender. She heard that he and a friend were not far away. To disguise herself, Alma stained her face and arms dark like the Indians, put on a dark ceiling, and at midnight went through the jungle to find Red Tiger. God helped her find him. She was able to talk to him and found out that he had not returned to his old life of sin, but, as she had suspected, others were killing and robbing, blaming the crimes on Red Tiger. He was very discouraged. Since he had escaped from the jail, Amma dared not help him in any way. Her life might be in danger. She left some books with him, praying that God would help him to do the right thing. Red Tiger promised Amma he would not rob or kill again. Later that week, while praying for Red Tiger, Amma heard shooting. Police had surrounded him. Red Tiger fired several shots into the air, hoping to frighten them. Then he sprang up to a bank of red dirt, threw his gun away, and raised his hands in surrender. He was instantly shot and killed, but he had kept his promise to Amma. He had not used his gun to kill. People continued to talk against Amma and her family because of her friendship with Red Tiger. But Amma was not afraid. She knew God was watching over her and that though her life was threatened, God protects even though that protection is unseen. Amma, so active all her years in India, was nearing the end of her exciting life. One evening, she was hurrying in the dark and fell into a pit, breaking her leg. For five hours, she lay waiting for help. In a motor lorry, she was taken to a hospital in the black of night in a torrent of rain over a dangerously flooded road. The car crossed a deep crack where part of the road was washed away. The car bounced over the crack without pausing, but Amma's leg was jerked up and banged down against the floor of the car, twisting it painfully. If the car had slipped into the crack in the road, all of them might have been drowned. But God still worked for Amma to do, had work for Amma to do. Though unseen, he still protected. Amma could no longer take an active part in caring for others. She was never able to walk again without pain. But her most important work was just beginning. Now she had time to write, and she put down on paper the story of the work God had given her in India. Because of her books, Christians all over the world now know about India's temple children. Laws have since been passed, making it a crime to sell a child to the temple. Today, Amma is in heaven with the Lord Jesus. Many boys and girls and grown-ups, too, are there also because Amma was faithful those many years in India.